<clears throat> first, first, let me show you show you Kevin's and. There's two things I want you to pay attention to. Uh, what the racket does at contact and what the racket does after contact. Okay. All right. Everybody kind of knows what you're supposed to do before contact. <laughs> you know, th that's kind of like the bread and butter of uh, uh, coaching, I feel like. It's like the ready position, the turn to the side, don't take the racket back, meet the ball out in front, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Uh, I want you to watch racket, uh, Kevin's racket at contact, what it does. Here's contact here. So what's happening is, as the ball meets his racket, his racket is rebounding mm -hmm. away from the point of contact. Okay. Um, that means he's got a certain amount of softness in his hand. That's what allows the racket to come back from contact or not come back from contact. Okay. If his hand was really, really tight and tense, which we're going to see in a second, uh, then there wouldn't be any give to his racket at all. Yep. It would just stay in place firmly. Now on the other hand is his hand, even though it's relaxed, continues moving Forward, yeah. forwards. And so we have this kind of dichotomy of movement but softness. Yes. And so the movement gives the ball direction and depth and guidance and the softness gives him control. Okay. So Does that make sense? If you ask me that question again, what was I doing differently today than <laughs> yesterday? Yeah. I would say <laughs> I was thinking about not gripping my racket so hard. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll show you some from yesterday. Okay. That's exactly what we saw. We saw the result okay. of that. So here, watch Kevin hit a couple in, in real time. <clears throat> can't even, you can't even and, see it. And so yeah. in real time. It looks like he's just swinging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait for one more like around. Right. So from here, it looks like. He's just hitting through the ball. Yeah, right. But if you slow it down, you'll see his racket wow, is absorbing is while his hand is pushing forwards. That's insane. Now, but it's I mean, it's yeah. it's slightly open. Yeah, slightly. And because his hand is relaxed, the the ball pushes the racket, the racket downwards and open mm -hmm. because his racket face is slightly open. And there's some downward motion as well. Like yeah. His racket's starting up above contact, sure, yeah. coming down slightly to contact. Yeah. But then it's the ball that's really creating that yep. kind of cupping. In real time, it looks like he's like yeah, coming you know, underneath the ball. I actually, when mm -hmm. I was watching, I was like, man, I don't know. It looks like you're cupping the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting ready to break you down. <laughs> But that, that is... What you're seeing is the, re the, the end here. His racket face is quite open. Yeah. But that's because he's extended his hand and his arm out towards his the intended target. target. Yeah. Right, right. right, right. Okay. Not because he started here and gone like this yeah. and tried to like scoop underneath the ball. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. So I'm curious about this. I, I actually, we've been talking about doing this, but we, we haven't, this is the first time we did it. Uh, so I asked Kevin to hit two shots down the middle and then hit one away. So here's the, the shot that he just controlled yep. back to Megan. There's the rebound yep. and the push out towards his target. And now this is the one that he was purposefully trying to put away. No more rebound. And so here's contact. The next frame, his racket is forwards, 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 forwards. And so he firmed up and went through towards his target so that more of the energy uh, of the ball gets redirected right at his target. Yeah. When his hand is looser, the racket absorbs some of it yeah. so that he can get the, the pace that he wants or the touch that he wants. Oh. So let me show you, right? Because it's actually pretty fascinating seeing the difference between uh, yesterday and today. But what we're gonna see a lot of is you basically just hitting a brick wall right at contact and everything just coming to an abrupt stop. Yeah. Whereas Kevin's was more smooth and guided out towards his target. Okay. And this is where touch comes from, is the combination of, of length of guide and softness of hand. Okay. And most players have neither. They're very short and abrupt and very tight. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so they have like one flavor of Valley down cold, which is like the firm like put away. Yeah. But all other varieties of Valley are like totally foreign to them because all they know how to feel is that Chop. hammer yeah. against the ball. Your backhand side on, on average is tighter than your, your forehand side. Um, your backhand side is very, very, very abrupt. Like, you can see it right there, yeah. There's like nothing going on with, with the racket. There, there's little to no give and the racket literally just stops there. And so the chances of being accurate are tiny because there's this collision occurring and everything just slams to a halt right there. And there's, there's no um, direction being given to the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, the strings tell the ball where to go, but it's very difficult to have them be reliably facing any one direction okay. when there's that much tension and that much abruptness to what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yes. There's a time and a place for, for firmness. Uh, but if that's the only type of shot being hit, then there's very little touch or control. And to be clear, there's a, a time and a place for um, short and compact as well. Mm -hmm. Our first progression, you're going to be right up next to the net, close enough that you could just reach out and touch it. <clears throat> Either Kevin or Megan are going to toss to you underhand. And we're going to begin by just turning to the side, laying the racket back a little bit, and just letting the ball bounce off. So you're not going to take the racket back. You're also not going to hit through. We're going to begin by just, clean, just cleanly just letting the ball bounce off the racket. Yeah, nice job. And your, your goal here is to do as little as possible. Like, don't even give the ball any forward guide at all. Exactly. Just let the ball bounce off. Yep. And I want you to feel that whatever tension is in your hand and slowly, yeah, dissipate it. Keep doing what you're doing. Check this out. So here's the, the ball that you just let bounce off your racket. Watch your racket. Ah. Nice, huh? Yeah. So that only happens if your hand is, is relaxed. Yeah, right. And it's not binary, by the way. It's not firm or relaxed. It's a huge sliding scale of different amounts of Tension. firmness, yeah, exactly, right. yeah. or softness. And there's a different situation or scenario for every different amount of, of firmness or softness. All right, let's go to the backhand side, please, Megan. Same thing. Good, good, good. And just do nothing. Feel the racket come away from contact. Good, good. Here, here's uh, two reps ago. There wasn't a whole lot of give. This is two shots ago. A little bit. Mm -hmm. And now here's the shot that, that you just hit. Oh, wow. Big difference, right? Oh, that's a huge difference. <laughs> In real time, like, it's... it's it takes a pretty quick eye to see the difference. But that one was just kind of more stationary, dead, and watch this one. See how it came away? Yeah. And it's all, it's all from, your, from your hand. Your yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, your job now is to set up the same way, wait for the ball to get close to your racket, and then give it a little bit of a guide. And so what we're looking for now is like a four, five, maybe six inch guide forwards. So there should be very little energy you know, on your part going into the ball. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. Watch the racket, rebound, oh, yeah. and then watch the push forwards. This is, a, is, is exactly the framework that we want for your volley. Okay, Sean, now we're gonna take that same framework and apply it to the backhand side, where you're used to being extremely short. And so, show me a couple shadow swings. Like just calm, smooth, forward guide, which is what we want to see on the video with uh, absorption from, from the racket. Okay. Yep, right idea. Right idea. Good, here. This is the one that you just hit. 
So now you've got oh, some, some yeah. room to give the ball some direction. Megan just about doubled her distance from you, which means so there's going to be more forward. energy on the ball, which means if you do the exact same thing, the ball will travel quite a bit further. So I want you to try to achieve basically the same result okay. by being a little bit more relaxed with your hand, okay. but still giving the ball direction. This is going to be great. Good job, Sean. This is what we want to see. Uh, watch this one in real time. So absorb and guide. This one is exactly what we want. Exact, exactly. Same thing on the backhand side. Show me a couple of practice ones. Really nice, Sean. That's it. That's it. Nice job. Okay, Megan's going to feed back and forth between your forehand and backhand now. Okay. And we want to see the same calm, smooth guide on both sides with, with rebound on both sides. Really nice, Sean. Great job. Great job. Good job on the forehand, Sean. Good. Good job. I'm going to play a couple of these. Forehand's looking really nice. Well, just it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Forehand's looking really calm and smooth. That was better. <laughs> That's good. Big, huge difference from that. Uh, yeah, can you show them uh, before and after? Much better job. Yeah, more rhythm on the backhand. Mm -hmm. All the way back. Yeah, and then see how the racket It's a little higher, but look how. Mm -hmm. you, you look like a good volleyer on the on the left. Yeah, versus somebody just kind of fending off balls. Yeah, or, yeah kind of playing defense. Yeah. Your target is past the service line over on the other side. We're looking for a long guide out towards the other side. All right, Sean. There's two variations here uh, we want to make sure you see. Uh, one is what we're after, and the other one, not so much. So the one you just hit, you created depth. And it's because of the length of your movement through the ball and the angle here at contact. Now, what should happen from here is your racket should go out and continue to, to open. You have a habit of turning and closing the racket face. And it's a little. It's a little nitpicky, a little immaterial because the ball's already gone. But I don't want this pronated turning mm -hmm. of your hand to start sneaking its way back in, closer to contact, mm -hmm. where you're starting to close the racket face. Later on, after a couple of reps, you actually started to, to open the racket up. I think this next one, this is, this is what we're looking for. So impact. Same, same angle at, at impact, but as you went through, you presented the strings to the ceiling mm -hmm. instead of closing the racket over. Okay. But this is, this is what we want to see here. Nice timing with your step, nice uh, absorption, nice guide. And so you should finish with the, the, rac the racket angled up towards the, the ceiling, okay. not turning over and closing it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's good. 
I just want you to see a couple of these. It's looking, it's looking really good. How's it feeling? Good. Looks like you're creating depth pretty easily, like smoothly. You're not having to punch or hack at the ball at all. In that half hour, it was pretty smooth. Kevin and I both kind of looked at each other after this shot. This is really nice use of your feet and your body. And the guided yeah, motion really out through the ball. Yeah. It's really smooth. No, I just have to remember to keep my hands off. Mm -hmm. Depending on the situation. Yeah. And again, it's, it's not an on-off switch. Yeah, like, right. It's about matching firmness to the situation.